Hello friends. So this is our fourth lecture on prology for poetry and a prology for poetry by Sir Philip Sidney. Now we have seen that in our last lecture the Romans called poets vates, means diviner, for, foreseer, prophet, etc. And also we saw that almost all the uh, writings you can see produced in or written in, in verse, as, as in the case of the oracles of Delphi, you so know, then uh, Sibylla's prophecies, you so. Holy David Psalms, these things we, already, we have already seen. Now, uh, what, what did the Greeks call them, called poets? The Greeks called the poets poie. Poi, poi, this is all. That means maker. The meaning is maker. Meaning is maker. Poi, that's poet. The interesting thing about this word poet is all the languages of the world, they have taken this from the Greeks. All, not the languages of the world, almost all the languages. I, I cannot say. 100 percent, but 95 percent of languages in the world, they use this word poet to describe persons who write in verse or uh, verse like prose. As we have already seen examples of Charles Lamb and uh, that also blind verse and so on. That is also verse again. Now, in the, uh, another point to note is this title poet is uh, according to. Uh, uh, Sydney, it is a high and incomparable title. Nobody else in the world has got this title. Very high and incomparable. High and incomparable. High and incomparable. Means you cannot compare this with any other thing. Why? He is the reason also. All the subject matter of all arts. That is nature. Aristotle has said, imitation means imitation of nature. Mimesis means you are imitating, feigning nature, imitating nature. So the only subject the stuff with which you can create, produce arts or create art, any art for that matter, that is nature. Understand that? So every artist is in a way slave of nature. Every artist borrows from nature. But what about the poet and the poet? He makes a nature. Either it is something new that he makes, or he makes what is given better. That's the difference. The other person is not like that. They take it and use it. But the poet either makes it better or he creates a new, a new world. Understand? As you can see, uh, as Sidney himself says in this section, this fourth section, I would say, fourth lecture, nature is brazen, but the poet is golden. Very important word. Right? Nature is, nature gives you, nature gives brazen. We are is a being. But poet, what does he do? He makes it golden. That's the A very important statement, isn't it? You, he also takes over nature, but he makes it better. How a thing ought to be. Remember when I gave you, when we were discussing Aristotle, I have given you 12 lectures on Aristotle, right from mimesis to catharsis. You can go, if you have time enough, you can go through that, or in the study, you can go through that. I can see that, there he says, the subject, the stuff of every artist is, every artist uses is nature. And then he says, nature is but that brazen, and uh, poets is golden. He makes better. But he, and then he gives a list of uh, these different branches of knowledge. Every branch of knowledge is an art. Said art. And I say, let's think about astronomy. 
astronomer, what does he do? He looks at the stars and then he decides what is the order of nature, order in nature. Order in nature. What is the order of nature? Say so for example, zodiac signs, stars. So this, you know this word Jadak? <laughs> I don't know, horoscope is. Now that is based on stars, the position of the stars. Again, sun, moon, the planets, their position will tell you what is going to be, what is high tide, when is low tide and so on. But it is there and he is only using it. Then you have water, the geometrician and the arithmetician. What do they do? They speak about quantities of things existing. Understand? They are thinking about, they, are, they speak about quantities of things existing. How many, how much and so on. And then you have got a musician. What does a musician do? Already the sound is here. He says some, some, sir, some geet means good sound. Some sounds are bad sound. So you select the good sounds and the other sound. That's how what the musician does. What about the natural philosopher? The natural philosopher, that is biology, zoology and so on. That is, nature is his subject matter. <laughs> what is there? He, is, he studies uh, animals, plants and so on. So that is already there. What do the moral philosophers say? Well, he says, this is wise, this is virtue. Means the, looking at the behavior of the people. That's also there. The matter is there. And then finally, the moral philosopher says, moral philosopher says, you follow nature. Then you will be in the right track. Otherwise you will be out of your track. Follow nature means, for, for example, if you eat too much, you will become sick. Understand, natural philosopher. Oh, about agriculture, cultivation. But then what about the lawyer? The lawyer says, what? Men, do you explain, so to say. The, the, the lawyer explains things to you. But the low point, that's already there. What about the historian? What people have done? Historian, actually, in fact, you can say, no imagination is required. Of course, good historians, that's another thing, but normal things, I say. What people have done? But historians, they cannot use their, for example, 1775, something happened, you cannot say, it might have happened in 1776, then that is not history. It's a battle of Plassey. You cannot change the date. Understand? Or here, the British came, the British East India Company came here, and such and such a year means you cannot change that. You have to accept it. What about the grammarian? He, already the language exists. He lays down some rules for them. Understand? And what about rhetoricians and logicians? They are the art of persuading, the art of arguing. Already things are there. You are making use of physician. What does the physician do? He says, this is good for your body and that's bad for your body. Your body is here. Metaphysics. And it's you will think that it is some other thing, but actually it is deep study of nature. So everything is there and he is made there with this uh, artist, they are making physician, lawyer, rhetorician, uh, grammarian, logician, historian, natural philosopher, moral philosopher, and a geometrician, astronomer, everyone does it. But what about the points? That is the point. The vigor of his invention, important. The poet has a vigor of invention. He invents. Understand? The vigor of his invention, the power of his invention. Yes. The vigor of power. Let us stick to this man because this is used by Sydney. The vigor of his invention. That is the point that you have to see. What does he do with the vigor of his invention? He creates another nature. He creates another nature. Either better or quite a new. Either better 
or quite a new, that means something new he makes. Understand? He makes, he makes heroes. Hercules, <laughs> you won't find anywhere. Only in the imagination of the poets. Demigods, semi-gods, cyclops, witches, God has not there. Angels, then you have what? You have what? Such uh, chimeras, chimeras, furies, that punishing the creations or the vigor of the invention, the product of the vigor of the invention of the of the poet, the maker, the poem. Understand? He has he has ornamented. The poet has made a wonderful, miraculous tapestry, tapestry, as diverse and more beautiful than nature has made. Do you remember the fourth book, book four in uh, Paradise Lost Milton's as the, as the serpent, how does the serpent view the garden, the paradise? The description is so, uh, well, something that you, you can, something of you, the imagination of the poets. There's nothing created like that. Nature has not created a thing like that, but it is so beautifully done by the poets. That's the thing. That is creating something in you. Very often I got these two lines from my book. You know, the morning the set man will clad walk over your high eastern hills. Morning. The description of the morning. In my book, witching time of the night. Might be the witching time of the night. That is not there, but this is the imagination of the poet. Understand? So that is it. So his a rich tapestry. As diverse as that created by a poet has not been created. You can't find that such a such a piece of created thing. In this world anywhere. It is far much more against them. Understand that? Beautiful than what you see here. And as you can see the description of daffodils by Wordsworth. Right? The, the description of daffodils. What about the Tindana Abbey lines? See? Or oh, the song of the skylark as described by Shelley. The song of the Sahirag is not, in nature you won't find such thing, but you will find it as a product of the invention, the vigor, the vigor of the poet's invention. The product of the vigor of the poet's invention. Listen. As well characters, for example, you have got friends, you have got uh, lovers, you have got uh, valiant people, strong people, that means very brave people, you have got princes in the world. But compare those. Can you find a greater level than Theogenes? Product of Theogenes? Product of the vigor of the poet's invention? A friend as Pylades. Can you find a friend? You have, you have, you have many friends, but you won't find one like Pylades as created by the poets. You have seen valiant people around you, but cannot compare such valiant people with Orlando. Now, should like, right? You have seen you. Uh, Princess, but can you find one like Xenophon Cyrus? No. The ideal prince who, after conquering people, the defeated ones, 
he feels equally as the victorious ones. Can you find a person like that? Can you find a son like Enos? In Virgil's Enos, who carries his old father on his back when the city was about to be ruined. Can you find a son like that? It is the creation of the poet. That's what he said. The poet by his vigor of invention, he makes things better or creates something new. Why all the other others? Lawyers, modern philosophers, philosophers, historians, mathematicians, geometricians, atheticians, astronomers, metaphysicians, rhetoricians, logicians. They do. They take something and they create something. That's all. They do something with that. That's it. See? So that is the power maker. Poet is the maker, poem. The poet makes the thing that is given to you, he makes it better or he creates something new. Delivering in such excellency as he imagines. You can, you can uh, delivering, who delivers? Twice. Delivering in such excellency. Excellency, as he has imagined. Understand? Not as we see. Just think of genius. Can you find a great scholar as Dr. Faustus? The creation of a, the invention of the vigor of the invention of the Understand? Can you find a credulous commander like Othello? Can you find two lovers like Romeo and Juliet? In the actual world, no. It's a creation of the poets. Descriptions and characters and so on. See that? So therefore it says, poet is a make. Actually what happened, you know, God created everything in all its beauty in the beginning. But then comes the fall of Adam, Adam, not Adam, sorry, made a mistake, Adam. I might be making many mistakes in pronunciation, maybe please excuse me. Because as I the other day told you when I was explaining Grimm's law, the three lectures on Grimm's law, you can go through that. Okay. One, two lectures exclusively for Grimm's law and one for uh, uh, Werner's law. Okay, so that is the thing. Now, what I, what I said is that Adam. So, with the fall of Adam, the shine of this creation disappeared. Before that, just because God is the greatest maker. The poet is made by God. Understand? The divine breath of the poets. The first divine breath that is that of God's created this wonderful world. With all its glory, splendid, magnificent, incomparable. Then what happened? The fall of Adam has disappeared. So now what we see is a second hand nature created by God. Created by original, but the second hand, the copy we see now. But what does the poet do? Poet is the second maker, equivalent to God, equal status. And he creates these things as bright, as beautiful, as these things were before the fall of God. That is the point. Not that he is competing with God, but he is trying to make it in his imagination, the original creation of God. That is what the poet was. So you have got princes like Cyrus. You have got friends like Pylades. 
you are like, you have, have got valiant people like Orlando. You have got such great friends of theatrics. You have got such wonderful sights of nature as that created by Milton in his paradise lost. You have got descriptions, excellent descriptions like, like excellent descriptions of morning like that I have just now got. You have you have walking forests. Who else can do that? The forest is walking. Bernamuts and Macbeth walking. What a poet can do. Therefore, we can say with the Greeks. The Greeks gave the name poet, means maker, a poet. And that name has been taken by almost all the languages in the world. You can see how vigorously Sydney is defending this art of poesy that has been disdained or disliked or has become the subject of scorn for other people. Sydney is very sad because there are people to defend soldier and horsemanship and even a horse. But there is nobody to defend white and poetry. So here I am, says. I am the defender, an apology for poetry. Apology here means defense. I hope you are following me. So, today we discuss the name, the last class we saw, women called them Vatis, means diviner, prophet, one who sees future, foreseer and so on. And that's, we are seeing that the Delphi, oracles of Delphi, Siddhulas, and then there was uh, songs and uh, all the great, even history. Historians put on the mask of poets. Herodotus, we have seen. Right? And uh, we also saw that verse has got uh, power to command spirits because it is measured. You know, it's measured. And the verse has got the, well, has got a special uh, quality that you can easily remember them. Remember those names. That also we have seen. Now we saw, this morning we saw that poet is maker equivalent to God. Equal status. In the sense that God created this wonderful world, fall of Adam, the shine is lost, and the poet is trying to bring back it. That's why nature's, the present nature is brazen, but the poet is golden. Then also we saw all the other arts, they just make use of it. It is this way that with the change. But in this case it's not like that. Either he agrees with the power, the vigor of his invention. Vigor. Delivering in such excellency as he has imagined. Vigor of his invention makes him to deliver things in such excellency as he has imagined. Then it becomes golden and ultimately it teaches you and also it uh, delights you. Ultimate end of poetry is poesy is delight, a rational delight. So, then, so the poet has achieved that. I hope you have been following this uh, lecture, uh, this defense. One by one, we saw the context, 1579, when Stephen goes on, he abused abuse himself. He said, abuse himself. And he even took the support from Plato, saying that Plato banished the poets from the Republic, and so on. But we are now defending it. I hope it is a very convincing defense. And uh, when I am delivering it to you as a teacher, I think it is convincing for you also. For me, it is perfect. But for you, um, so we'll have the next lecture uh, in, uh, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Till then, bye. Have a nice time. Enjoy.